Any given game can be a fantastic work of art, writing that rivals the best dramas that we have, scenery that makes you feel lost while sitting in a chair, and music that reduces us to nothing but a puddle of emotion. On top of that, it might be actually a decent game too. And yet, just making a great product is not enough. In fact, the thing on its own worth nothing unless it's properly marketed, advertised and distributed to the general audience. We can argue that these are actually more vital than the product itself, so it's an open question where the real value comes from. Which bears another question. At what point one should stop putting time and effort into product development before hitting diminishing returns and diverging all that effort into the surrounding it promotional activities? Or even better question would be, is the product itself irrelevant to its success? Be it a game or a piece of writing or a movie or an application, things like huge billboards, commercials and other in-your-face product pushers have always been a thing. You can say it's invasive, but at this point this is just live. However, there is far more than meets the eye regarding how to make people interested in whatever thing you want them to become interested in. Games in general have a very distinct and genre-defining aspect to them, which other forms of entertainment do not have. Gaming is an inherently interactive form of entertainment. Uh, notice here I'm including all the offline games too. Board games, sports, social games like Mafia, it really doesn't matter, because we can go even further on that line of thought. In order to play, we don't even need a game so to speak. Infants play, rats play. Which is all to say that to play is to interact. From this point on, I'm going to specialize and talk about games and video games specifically. According to the latest figures, the video game business is now larger than both the movie and music industries combined. And why is that? Now it's going to be a stretch, but imagine a one-dimensional world. We can't do much here but move from left to right and from right to left along a predefined line. But what's important here, there is one point where we are, but there are many points where we are not. And if we are going to scale that up, for a two-dimensional world, we have vastly more freedom, but with more freedom, there is quite literally more room for mistakes and blind spots. This is relevant because the world that we live in as human beings is incomprehensibly larger than a two-dimensional plane, and therefore the room for our potential shortcomings is consequently incomprehensibly larger. Which introduces a huge opening for things like exploitation because we don't see or understand everything, we can be taken advantage of and it shouldn't come as a surprise that we are being taken advantage of all the time. If we scale that huge world around us back to games and movies and applications, we can see that games give us way more freedom in how we interact with them compared to, say, watching a movie or reading a book. And therefore, there are way more ways a developer can actually interact with us. And why wouldn't they make their game more enticing to play, more entertaining, and more addicting? As for today, we have an extensive array of books which delve into progression hooks, reward loops, and other countless related mechanisms which we can safely classify as dopaminergic traps. Compelling? Yes, but the word compelling implies forced action on some unconscious level which is beyond our control. It's there, but unlike advertising and marketing, you don't see it. It's a two-sided coin. On one side, we can say these are designed to provide a more entertaining environment, which is true. On the other hand, we can say these are in fact completely unethical practices which suck lives out of the players through carefully placed invisible little straws, which happens to be also true, because given a malleable enough individual, such mechanisms can seriously damage their lives to a point of complete destruction, leaving nothing of a person but a shell with no ghost. I believe many people haven't thought about this in such a way, but ultimately in the process of chasing numbers, you reduce yourself to a number. Have you heard about gamification? Because what happened here, games perfected this idea of engagement and became so effective at being digital crack, it's now being incorporated into jobs. Moreover, how about the Chinese social credit score system? 
They gamified playing a good citizen on a billion people scale, which is as remarkable as it is truly terrifying. For this series, instead of delving straight into these behavior stimuli, which again by now many books have been written about, I'm going to fly over the entire landscape of incentives and explore the part that is not located in the game, the player. We will go beyond sheer incentive rewards and try to examine the word addiction in a courageous attempt to supersede it with the word involvement. The difference is, five years down the line, such a player, instead of thinking about the whole experience with your game as a complete waste of time, he'll be genuinely happy about it. And that's the difference that I want to show you. I really want to end this introduction with a song by Tyler Lyle. I can't sing myself, so I'm just going to read it out loud to you. One year closer to my death, I haven't found what I'm looking for yet. It ain't big blue eyes and long blonde hair. It ain't a million dollars or a secret prayer. I see my corpse was born inside of me. Sometimes I carry him, sometimes he carries me. And as we ride this desert foreign land, when my prayers don't work, I use my hands. Which is to say that the real power lies in the human element. We all have it, but sometimes we forget about it. And when that happens, we fill that void with whatever comes first. And it's not satisfying. At least it's not satisfying enough. And that's exactly what I want to explore in this series. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of it. This is going to be a psychology slash sociology blend. And I'm using video games strictly for illustrative purposes. I'm also uploading my previews, drafts and other behind the scenes activities on my Patreon page. So instead of supporting me just for the content I'm making here on YouTube, you can get something extra in return. So definitely check it out. And uh, I've also set up a Discord server for anyone interested in forming a community. Join if you want to participate. I'll be more than happy to talk to you guys. And in the meantime, thanks for your attention. Uh, take care of yourselves and uh, your families.